Okay, good morning, ma'am, and thank you for that humble introduction. Um, blessed morning, everyone. Um, we thank the Lord for giving us another opportunity to enjoy His marvelous grace. Indeed, we are not hindered by this pandemic to pursue our individual aspirations. So, one greetings to all our participants from across the country. And my salute to the um, humble team of the Department of Information and Communications Technology in the Cluster 2 for spearheading this free webinar series. Uh, I'll be sharing my slides now in a moment. In my sharing today, we'll focus on the effective instructional materials for teachers in the new normal. For a moment, I will just close my camera. Okay. Um, one of the downside of this virtual learning is the internet connectivity. So I'm sorry in advance if. Sometimes I lag because of the internet connection. By the way, I am from Sargao Islands. So, <coughs> so layo siya. Can, can, you see, can, um, can you see my screen? Yes, po, sir. We can see your screen, po. Um, again, good morning and to good, good morning also to um, Engineer Ricardo Bacolod Jr., the Provincial Officer of BICP Surigao del Norte and Province of Dunagat Island. Um, to all of the participants, good morning. So my sharing today will focus on the effective instructional materials for teachers in the new normal, of which my lecture outline will start on the highlight of COVID-19 timeline and the new normal, um, the technologies for teaching and learning in the new normal, and the online platforms for the development of instructional materials. As of the moment, the only thing we can associate um, As of the moment, the only thing we can associate in the word new normal is the onset of the COVID-19 pandemic. Looking back, the COVID-19 was first experienced in Wuhan, China in late December 2019. A highlight of COVID timeline shows that on January 13, 2020, the first coronavirus infection outside China was reported. And in February 2, 2020, the first coronavirus mortality outside China reported. Last March 11, 2020, the World Health Organization announced the outbreak a pandemic spreading to the different continents. And on April 10, 2020, the global death toll surpassed 100,000. Last May 11, 2020, countries like Spain, New Zealand, Thailand, and Iran began to ease their quarantine restrictions after a decrease. But in the Philippines, as of yesterday, we have a total of 361,000 and plus an additional of 1,660 cases as of yesterday. With this total, um, 311,000 have recovered and unfortunately 6,690 um, among our fellow Filipinos last 15 of yesterday has joined the creator. Worldwide, the total cases is 40.4 million and those who have recovered is 27.7 million and a total of 1.12 million deaths. With this current health crisis the world is faced today, educational systems are likewise preparing 
for this COVID-19 era characterized by the new normal. The expression new normal first made emerge in business when it was used to caution the belief of economists that industrial economies would revert to normal after the recession. However, the term has since been used in different contexts to mean that something which was previously not typical has become typical, and that in the onset of this pandemic, we have the term so-called new normal. The Urban Dictionary in 2009 described new normal as the situation of being after some intense change has occurred. Again, the situation of being after some intense change has occurred. Like what happened in the entire um, uh, worldwide, what happened worldwide is that because of this pandemic, we are adjusting to some of the usual thing we previously did to something that is um, beyond that. The, um, it substitutes the accepted habitual usual state that after a certain event happened. As we will face the new normal, however, the rules of the teacher are still intact. And he has a role to play for himself and for the society. In fact, um, Dr. Mary Grace A. Gomez faculty of the Council of Education area in the College of Education of the University of the Philippines, Diliman, discussed the roles and challenges of parents, students, and teachers faced in this new normal. That is, we as teachers have roles to play for ourselves. So as our role to ourselves, you have to be a self-care practitioner and a promoter of wellness. So let us be concerned of ourselves that despite the workloads that we have, we always have to take care of ourselves. And that we also need to be um, physically fit and mentally healthy. With this, our aspirations, our goals, our mission, as we are bound to this teaching profession, will still be possible. And also, we as teachers also have roles towards our students and families. That is, we need to remind them of health protocols. And um, as we remind them, we also have to teach them skills for psychosocial and mental wellness. And that um, to focus on the things that they can control, to identify their needs and to move them to proper, proper authorities who can address their needs and to empower them. But for the teaching profession, as we are bound to teach and we are commissioned, and I know that we are all passionate about helping our young generation to be our future leaders, um, future responsible citizens in the country. So, in the teaching profession, um, we need to adapt to the changing landscape of education in the context of COVID-19 pandemic. So, both in the basic education and in the commission on higher education are pursuing some preventive measures in the spread of this um, novel coronavirus. And we have to adapt on this changing landscape. At the same time, we have to give our best in teaching. So that is why uh, we are here today. I am here today to share with you some um, practices that our campus is pursuing in the context of instructional materials development. However, um, with these roles as teachers, with this profession, um, with our roles in the teaching profession, we are always um, 
we, we always met some challenges along the way. So I am sharing as well here with you the challenges of teachers in the new normal, of which first, which is the very famous and is common to everyone, the creation of modules or video lesson, lessons. Uh, women from our participants um, have not made a learning module. I guess um, everybody was able to um, create their learning modules. The fact that, um, like in basic education, we are not only um, bound to what is being provided by the department, but we are also encouraged to create learning activities. Like we have to, um, we have to consider our our um, local communities in the crafting of our learning modules. And with that, we are so challenged like um, factors affecting the creation of modules which also affect our personal being. Another challenge in this new normal for us teachers is the technology limitations. Though we have already the desire and we have the capacity, we have we have we are already equipped with the necessary skills intellectually as to how we would create our modules which are all aligned to our um learning competencies set or the curriculum standards set by the department but we are also constrained with some technology limitations like the internet connection like we much as we desire to make a very comprehensive learning module but we are hampered by some of um, technology limitations like internet connectivity like the availability of the technology resources in our respective schools and aside from that um, the fatigue brought by this work from home like um, both in in uh, like on all government offices or even in private offices, um, we are encouraged or like we are we are ordered that um, our administration should think of some skeleton workforce and some of those who will be in work from home. No, so one of the um, downside I would say for this work from home arrangement is that fatigue. Considering that although we are only going to perform our respective tasks at our in, in our respective homes, but the so teachers or um, even other professionals are also challenged with this, and that no one nobody is excused and the fatigue that it brought to us. However, at some point we can rest, like we can, like we can, um, we can adjust. Especially that on the pacing, um, we are the ones who are like um, um, tayo po yung nagtake charge, depending lang po sa atin yung pag paggawa natin ng mga tasks. However, fatigue is always there. And aside from that, another challenge. Uh, um, is on the fear of contagion or having a relative who are sick. So definitely, um, emotionally, psychologically, we are thinking like, oh, what? especially if something happened to us, like we're not feeling well, and that, that because and that like it, and because of the fatigue that this uh, that this work from home has brought to you, and sometimes we will feel sick and that sickness might be associated to the COVID-19 pandemic. So instead of teachers are going to relax or instead of teachers to tell their colleagues that they have this feeling of sickness, some will just um, keep in their hearts and minds so that they will not be labeled as something um, suspected or affected with this COVID-19. So, um, the fear of contagion is there. You know, and aside from that, um, sometimes when when we feel sick, we might be thinking of 
who are those persons that we were acquainted with in the of very recently they might be some have traveled um outside your municipality or outside your comfort zone so it's like you are already afraid that maybe they also have some um encounter no? interaction with other people who might be also ex- exposed to some cases with or some uh, individuals with covid-19 cases and aside from that the fear that if ever our relative or or any of our family members are are sick so we are associating to some kind of covid-19 um um influence again or infection again so all these health problems are leading us to think you know another mental health challenges like anxiety uh, will bring to us something that is not the usual thing happen to us because um you know that some you are not you are not like well well enough in um presently and then you will encounter like um with this all other challenges and then anxiety depression might develop in us like like um we have to think like um what should you eat what should you do or what what, what else um should you do so that all this anxiety might um disappear disappear no so we are um with this the new normal has really brought challenges to all of us um however the covid-19 pandemic undeniably caught education systems and learning learners of guard this situation is a gap in the curriculum and one of the steps to address this gap is to develop a set of preparedness competencies forming a goal of the curriculum So with the restrictions brought by COVID-19 pandemic a new normal a new normal curriculum may also adapt the integration of content this approach may possible to reduce the number of hours spent on all the subjects but still addressing all the curriculum expectations this strategy will enable the assimilation of the curriculum content from various subjects in designing and instruction for example um in teaching literature or science or history contents may be integrated by going through historical periods and focus on scientific inventions and literary works during each period however if you will also be employing this um again technology limitation is one of the considerations especially those teachers in the far flung areas in the remote areas so how could we make sure of the integration of all this um in the curriculum so it was suggested by for the guardi and stoyer in 1991 a range of integration models they introduced 10 integration models such as fragmented connected nested sequenced shared webbed threaded integrated or merged and networked but all this again um needs consideration of the technology these models require the assimilation of skills and concepts from various subjects or disciplines within the curriculum and it could be a good strategy for educators to reduce curriculum pressures to cover all content amid the continuing restrictions so um despite the the curriculum standards set by the department with the learning competencies defined we as teachers and in the context of the new normal should really think of ways in integrating contents like um i believe that it is employing modular approach 
and some of each EIs are on blended learning, of which there is an online activities for students, and there are also um, modules provided, especially those who cannot access the internet. So with this, we are challenged at how could we make our curriculum or our lessons substantial, fitting to the standards in the curriculum, considering that we have to integrate the content. So we have to look into the topics, we have to scrutinize the topics, although the department has already provided modules for everyone, but we have to consider the special, although we know that, the, that those modules have been validated already by some experts in the department, and it was revised based on some recommendations, but we also have to consider that in the context of our individual schools, how would our learners learn the way um, they usually learn? Like, we have to consider their individual differences. Like, um, modules from the kingdom might be different, or the the the, the less, uh, although the lessons are the same, but. The activities that you have to provide for Bukidnon setting might be different for Surigao or those from Cebu might be different from that in Aurora. So we have to integrate content with proper scrutiny as to the lessons that we will um, be picking. And aside from integrating the content, some educational systems are also contemplating to reduce the curriculum content. So it's not only the integration of the content, but in the study of Kahapai, um, we have to reduce the curriculum content. And do you want to teach content? Huh? We have to consider teaching content that is essential and remove content that is not. However, a major problem in this proposal lies in the question how we define, how do we define essential? If we consider how we are the great integration of content and there is reduction of the curriculum content, but only to teach in this reduction of curriculum content, we only have to look into to focus on teaching contents that are essential and remove those are not. But the challenge, another question at hand now is how do we define essential. So how do we define essential content? So, in this consideration, Print in 1993 advised that in selecting content, one must observe several considerations. And within the current global COVID-19 outbreak, the following three considerations are suggested. So, first is significance. Like, this is the criterion which applies that um, content is considered in terms of how fundamental it is to the theme under study. Like, if we are teaching um, grade 7 mathematics um, in the context of um, algebra, in the basic algebra context, what should we consider teaching? So we have to look into topics which are of um, the very basics, huh? the fundamental in the theme under study. We can still integrate, of course, problem solving, but um, the kind, of, because we have to consider, we know, we know the fact of our students, um, for how many years of teaching, like, you are, all, we are all aware of how would our students learn, for example, in the language of algebra. So it is actually um, uh, we have we, we, we will just look into the foundation co concepts like the basics that the students should learn, especially that we are applying modular approach of which our of which only our students are the ones reading. They will be learning from themselves. Um, some might have due assistance from parents or relatives who have knowledge about the subject matter but the thing is they cannot expound like you like what well, like how you did it like you they cannot expound well enough like how you as the teacher explain the context 
So with that, um, we have to limit in giving of our problem solving activities. Like problem solving, which are basic and understandable to the level of the students. Or if not, we will also be providing um, problem solving activities with a detailed solution like how it is being done like especially in word problems so um individually step by step we have to provide to the module we have to integrate in the module the step-by-step -step process in how to solve this and for for um science context as well a detailed process flow of the experimentation should we have or we, should we plan for some um, application for the lesson like there is an experimentation but we, we have to make sure that these activities or the materials the resources that the, our students should be using are all available in the in, in the respective homes like we can apply just the um, basic and realistic or um, realistic um, activities that our students should learn in this particular topic. So that is for the significance. One consideration in um, thinking of topics or content which are essential. Aside from that, we also have this so-called relevance. So this anchored on the reality that content should be related to the perspectives of the community values, aspirations, principles, and problems that would help learners become effective citizens. So we have to look into activities which are relatable to our students. Like in, if you are um, giving some um, topics in geography or in history, and you will be discussing like, like the you you're discussing some uh, landmarks. So instead of using landmarks that is from like the, the novel landmarks like Result Park, so you may be using landmarks that are applicable that are available in your respective communities like simply we can make use of the um, barangay hall or some of the um, um, stores with um, available basic commodities uh, so we have to look into some of the contents which are relevant to what the present experience of our students and lastly we have this utility um, curricularists should consider two years forms of the content, the current and the future. There is some content that learners need to learn to apply in the immediate present and other content to prepare them to deal with the future. So, um, you have to look into some um, like materials, like activities that are directly can be utilized by our students in the pursuit or in their quest for learning. So those are the considerations that teachers should put in mind as to determining essential contents to be included in the lessons. Now, after we have already identified essential contents, we are now ready to prepare learning modules or instructional materials in general. Instructional materials refer to those alternative channels of communication which a classroom teacher can use to uh, look at now. We have to concretize a concept during teaching learning process. And basically, we have books, um, worksheets, we have 3D models, um, learning modules, and we have charts. These are instructional materials that can supplement our students while we are learning in this new normal because of this COVID-19 pandemic. But the famous of this that we are all creating at the moment is the learning modules. 
and worships. Aside from that, for those with online access, like those um, teachers who are, or those um, schools who are into blended learning, both with online and offline activities for students, we can also integrate videos as one of the instructional materials. Like we can videotape our lessons and have it sent to our students um, so that um, they will be guided especially for the context or the areas on the lesson that needs a deeper explanation. And we can also make use of photos, then presentations, then vlogs, then some infographics. So these are instructional materials that can be useful for those who are um, integrating blended learning approach to the um, in the delivery of instruction in this new normal. And for the teach technologies for teaching and learning, we can make use of some um, awesome presentation like PowerPoint. We have the Prezi, the Canva, um, some Google Slides, and thing Thingling. However, all these like uh, need an internet connectivity. Although, like in preparation for PowerPoint and Prezi, although students can create it offline. However, if this will be um, submitted to the teacher concern, so it it needs internet connection. All the rest here, like it needs all internet connection. So these are some awesome presentation that might be helpful for all the teachers who, who are doing um, blended learning as their approach in instruction in this new normal. And another, for learning management system, we can make use of Edmodo, the Google Classroom, and the Canvas. Um, in our school, we are implementing, or since we are using blended learning, we are, have this Google Classroom. We have active, we have active um, G Suite account as well that our students can um, log on in this platform, and it's easy to use, it's, um, it's user-friendly, and um, but however, the, the need of internet connection is still necessary. And for live interaction, so again, the, those learning manage, the, those are the online platforms that can be useful for learning management system. For Live interaction, we have the famous Zoom and of course the Google Meet, one of the Google Hangouts um, together with that of Google Classroom and Canvas again and we have Adobe Connect and Big Blue Button. So we can explore this, we can have some tutorials on this in YouTube, we can download some instructions as to how to maneuver all this but here the for for example in our institution the thing that we have access we have this g suite account and our students and faculty can uh, make use of google meet without um, time disruptions like we can set as much as um, how many, how, how long, as much as how long you want to discuss our lesson. So we can make use of the Google Meet and it's all free because uh, we were able to access uh, free for all students and faculty because we were able to access that account. No? Um, for Zoom, if there, if there is a need for us to like have this premium for us to um, like an unlimited um, discussion. However, Google Meet can do the same as like that of Zoom. So all the rest, this still can be, um, uh, these are all user friendly and instructions can be downloaded. For screen recording as well, we will be using PowerPoint. Then we have this screen, screencastify and we have this screencastomatic. 
So if you wish all this for your lessons, you can, you can make use of this. However, only those with blended learning approaches, no? Because in those who are applying modular um, classes, and this might not be applicable, again, because of the technology constraints. For video production, we can also make use of PowerPoint and the Nearpod, the Loom, the Flipgrid, and the Vimeo. Mm -hmm. And for bulletin board, we can make use of Jamboard, uh, Zyteboard.com, and Padlet. So, since all that this sharing I have is more into blended learning, but for those who are in modular approaches, we can still create things um, as comprehensive as possible. Like, we can make use of our local knowledge, our local culture, or make use of our materials, contextualize and localize. Although we will be providing our students with the modules, but we have to make sure that the experiences, the examples that we cite in the modules will be relatable, applicable. Like contextualize we have to bring into the lesson in mathematics, for example, into reality. And making that more understandable to the part of the students that reality or that real life problems must be um localized like it must be transfer or it must be transformed into or it must be delivered into local setting because um in the past like um even in last year the integration of local culture of these what we call localized materials. So one of the idea in the localized material um, is the integration of local culture. Simamora and Sergey claim that mathematics learning materials developed based on guided discover learning model integrated with local culture improve the quality of teaching and learning mathematics. So Although we have a problem with technology, we have a problem with internet connection, but helping our students to do better, for example, in mathematics or in science, in English, in all our related disciplines, could still be possible if the instructional materials that we provide are relatable to the present experience of our students. This is where contextualization and localization comes in. Well, in the department, like in uh, in the department of education, we are all um, we are all encouraged to create a learning module or learning or instructional materials which are contextualized and localized. Even before before the pandemic, we have already um, integrated this in our respective lessons. We were able to craft some. some um, what do we call that one? Uh, um, a strategic intervention materials. Like we were able to determine the list and competencies of our students in this particular topic. And we look into some possible strategy that might be helpful to our students in relearning the material. So the Department of Education is pushing us to create some strategic intervention materials and we are also encouraged that this might be integrated or would be integrated with the context of contextualization and localization. Obviously, integration with culture has helped improve the quality of teaching and learning. And I believe it's not only in mathematics, but across all disciplines. And the use of improvised materials as well, like in chemistry, has allowed students to interact better in their lesson. It made learning exciting and fun. So it encouraged active participation, bringing learning homewards, and often improved and enhanced students' performance. So this is the study of OB and OB in 2019, of which they were able to 
make some improvised materials. And when we said improvised materials, localization is there. Like we have to ensure that the materials that we will be providing for this particular topic will really be available in the locality. And the study shows that when we consider doing or crafting materials or making materials like this, an enhanced student performance is possible. And even in a Christian religious organization, uh, Christian religious studies, or some, I have also read some Islamic studies that in the improvised materials or the learning materials have really improved students' academic performance. So teachers, we should be creative enough in crafting our learning modules, aside from the one that is being provided by the department to all of us, it can be downloaded and we have to print and the usual thing happened is we, we browsed the net, we were able to um, access the downloadable um, learning materials and we were able to print all those since the fact we have considered that um, um, some of the division are piloting this, they were able to um, device or are able to create some learning modules ahead of time like there was already a validation happened and you are thinking that this is good enough for your students i hope we as teachers we will not limit on we will not focus on printing or to make make use of learning assessment tasks or learning activity sheets that might be helpful to students which is anchored activities additional learning activities as what we call um, supplemental learning activities that might aid our students in understanding this lesson so improvised materials indeed play a significant role in the context of this new normal. And even um, even before, even it's not yet new normal because the study was in 2018 and 2019. So obviously, when we integrate this localization and contextualization agenda, it is seen that students' learning improves. And the use of instructional materials as well in English courses improves achievement in English reading and comprehension. So, um, like the, the, the other, the other manipul manipulatives that we will be using in the discussion, like in, in, in literature or in grammar. So, we have to make sure that these materials as well are relatable to the present experience of our students. And integrated science instructional materials could overcome the problem in science teaching and improve digital literacy of students in terms of scientific, functional, and visual literacy. So obviously, if we teachers will really have to put our, I know that we are, we are bombarded of the task in this new normal and i know that we have the desire to really let our students understand well the lessons but much as we want that we are hampered by the current situation now and the only thing that is possible for us to do to help them is to think of some instructional materials that is meaningful and interesting to them so i hope that as we consider like providing modules for students for the next quarter or for the next week for the next lesson for the next chapter we have to make sure that we put into our hearts our creativity into it and manipulatives in mathematics um based on e-learning and character building was found to increase 
students' independence and responsibility. There are a lot of other literatures that can be accessed in the web, like in Google Scholar, in, in Eric, with regards to the use of instructional materials. But the thing is, we are still challenged of what potential thing should we include in our um, learning materials. Yes, we are aware of the curriculum, we are aware of the content, what are going to, what, what should be teach, what we think are essential to our students, but to make it more, uh, to make the instructional materials effective, we must have to anchor in the creation of that to some kind of framework. And this framework suggests some instructional design models. These instructional design models focus on cognition, like in the mental ability. We have to look into um, ways like how should we develop the cognitive ability of our students. So one consideration is cognition and another consideration is in the framework of material development. In the past, the cognitive ability, ability of students is being um, designed, like the, the, how to learn in the cognitive domain was designed by Bloom in 1956. And just in 2001, one of the um, co-authors of Bloom, Cathwell, together with Anderson, developed or no, revised the taxonomy into this thing. Like we have from the noun form before uh, was changed into verb form. No, it's remembering, understanding, applying, analyzing, evaluating, and creating. Previously, evaluation was at the top, like the highest um, cognitive domain, but in the revision of um, Cathwell and Anderson, creating or the synthesis level becomes at the top. So, we will look into, in the, in, in the type of activities that we will give to our students, we will integrate in our instructional materials, we have to be aware or we have to remind ourselves that the Bloom's taxonomy play a very vital role, plays a very vital role. Like in the lesson activities that we will integrate, we will consider um, recall of facts and basic concepts. Then we will let our students explain ideas or concepts and make use of information in new situations. After that, we will, be, um, we will also be providing um, activities which would allow them to draw connections among ideas. And we will let them um, be exposed to some undertaking or some experience that they were able to justify a stand or decide for their own like related to this topic. And finally, we will have to make them produce new or original work. Because in this outcomes-based education, we have to consider that despite the new normal, this pandemic will not hinder us to help our students develop the very best version of themselves. And that is, we, we, we know that they were able to become the best version of themselves if they were able to um, provide no? um, um, outputs which we, we think that um, they have developed the, their entirety as a person. With this Bloom's taxonomy, we have, in the, in the development of the cognitive domain, we consider always that, what's, that uh, what we call the low order, or lower order thinking skills and the higher order thinking skills. But most importantly, even if we are only providing like modules for students, activities would really 
help our students develop their hearts, their higher order thinking skills, of which we will help our students um, develop the ability to analyze, to evaluate um, situation and create something. So this is the, the cognitive domain on the preparation or crafting or creation of the learning material. But we can also look into the framework on material development. Like basically for material development, um, we have to apply this ADI model. This ADI model was um, popularized in the study of computer science before, but this is also applicable in all undertakings in material development. Like ADI stands for analysis. So what should we do in analysis? Like ADI for analysis, design, development, implementation, and evaluation. Like in analysis, what should we consider? So we have to consider what objectives, you know? what objectives do you want to, like in this lesson, what do you want to, for your students to learn? So we have to look into possible learning outcomes that might develop our students after, I would say, reading the lesson or read, reading after reading the module. What do you want our, our students to become? So we have to look in, in that way. We're looking into the objectives. Like we have to define success. We have to look in um, possible ways to consider in measuring success. And we have to know our students, our audience, and the available resources. Aside from analysis, in ADI, we will also be considering design phase. Like in design phase, the content. This is where our cognition, you know, the, the framework for cognition comes in. Like in content, ideas, uh, the format, the activities, the measure. So activities which are, um, which are aligned to hearts and lots or which are aligned to the Bloom's taxonomy. So we have to prepare some learning activities, or examples and exercises which will develop the higher order thinking skills. So this is where design comes in. What do we plan to put into our instructional materials that might be helpful to our students in learning? In this new normal. After that, we have to uh, develop materials. Like we have to make materials. We have to make a prototype. And that's where uh, the first thing, like encoding, comes in, and basic design with the module. Or if the institution has format for this module development, so we will have to consider that. But the thing is, we need to have a prototype or a hard copy. And it, this hard copy should be um, reviewed, thoroughly reviewed. And I believe some of the institutions, some higher um, idea, and not some, I know uh, maybe, <laughs> higher educational institutions have their validation committee to look into the validity and reliability of the materials like there are considerations there are standards set by these institutions these educational institutions as to the format then as to the content and if with this we will also be looking into for the tab looking into the learning competencies described or defined in the um curriculum guides and for those in higher ed, we, are, we have to consider looking into reviewing into our syllabus. Or the, 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 syllab the syllabus are also anchored to that shared memorandums. So, memoranda. So, we have to, in the development, we will be looking into our um, learning outcomes, possible learning outcomes, so as to finally craft what is appropriate and 
um, but we, we pass also in the standard of our respective institutions. So after the development, we have to implement it. And in the implementation, um, one consideration in the implementation is to validate. Like before we finally provide this this modules, we have to make sure that it is truly validated. Mm -hmm. And then as it goes after uh, uh, as it goes to implementation, we will be finding feedback from our experts. Like in implementation, we can consider as well here the pilot testing, no? And the revision, like after we implement, I'm sorry, in evaluation. Because after we implement, we will, we will be able to look into some um, sa some portion in our modules that that are not that so essential maybe or we need to upgrade or we need to update because we need to have additional inputs no? so the model really plays a significant role in material development be it in software or in learning material for basic education or for in higher education so as the development even if it's not new normal like for me for example um when i was able to make a learning material i applied this adi model i anchored my learning material to this adi model of which i started looking into the curriculum standards like the learning standards and the learning competencies of our students that are expected for some lesson and then i'm um, looking into uh, preparing the the um, activities which are aligned to Bloom's taxonomy and after that is um, crafting of the learning material like putting development of the learning material putting into the prototype the, the, the those what I have in mind and after that I was able to um, ask validators some experts I mean to validate my um, learning material and after it was being validated some recommendations were integrated so it this calls revision of the learning material that because um with that after we that we know that our materials will be of great significance if this is duly validated this is revised based on the perceptions of the experts we have in the discipline so it's okay for all of our teachers that we can tap some of our friends like some of our like superior maybe to help us in the in crafting of the learning material no and after that when it's validated it's ready for distribution so we will implement now and then we have to thoroughly review because um an improvement of our material will still be um, possible after a series of implementation so for learning material development we really have to consider adi mm -hmm. so in this case like it's new normal i know that we are still applying adi but we, you are already using adi however um it is i for some maybe you are or the knowledge that you, the, the thing that you are using the procedures or the steps that you are already been uh, you have already been using are that of adi already mm -hmm. and with that we would like i would like to commend our my our fellow teachers in the teaching profession that um they think that we were able to come up our learning materials and have able to provide to our students so in this new normal how do we access like uh, like packaging our our learning material how would how 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 to access so i have your helpful online platforms for material development of which uh, we can make use of our uh, if we have i 
um, I know we have already internet connections. No, only then we have the capacity to to have uh, uh, to look to search to browse in the online world, and we have these some platforms that might be might, um, helpful in material development, especially that we are having this work from home. We can make this of Google Chrome, um, Opera, and Mozilla and the rest in accessing some of these platforms. And like if we are already like we have six, for example, we all we have six um, teaching loads, like six different subjects, and you are assigned in that area. And you have already downloaded some of the materials provided by the department. But then because of your interest that your students or your pupils would be uh, would learn deeper in the context of your lesson um, you are encouraged to make a learning material like you are encouraged to make learning activity sheets which is integrated with localization and contextualization agenda but when as you integrate already like in English maybe or some of the disciplines which have um, which make use of English language as the medium and we are ran out we ran out of words like um what is it's for you it's what, what is the appropriate word that can be used or that might be used for this context so we have some online platform that will look into difference between two words so we can make use of this um link i have here in your screen no? the link that can be useful into looking into um the best or the appropriate word that that should be used in a sentence for example like when are going to use supper and when are going to use dinner so instead of um thinking that way so hard we already have some online platforms that can help us just go to www.differencebetween.net and you can make use of a lot of possible words that um, you have to look into the, the differences aside from the difference between we can also make use of the google scholar so for a scholarly article especially that if you wish to explore like how effective is the instructional materials you have provided to your students so it is fitting that we have to consider basing it to some researches so the google scholar can provide us a lot of um studies literature that um we can anchor to for our um in in that in to further our study for example again if you have to look into the, the effectiveness of the material and you might you may you may be guided with other literatures what are the claims of those authors who are doing like who are, who are, who are doing related studies of yours so just go to google scholar and aside from that we have google shortener so earlier i have shown to you the um what are the, um some the pyramid no? the, the, in the cognitive domain of bloom's taxonomy I, if you can still remember in the previous slides um there is a source i put but the original source of that is too long and if i'm going to put that one it's it might not be um, good to look at, no? So I am using, I am using URL shortener and we can access it in www.shorturl at uh, that at slash. So we can make use of this to shorten our URL. Like you are browsing pictures and you want to include a picture in the, in your learning material. I, I know we are all aware that we have to consider um, the the copyright, no? 
you may, you may be charged to some copyright infringement or some plagiarism context if we will not credit no? the, the 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 picture the photo that you have included in your material so it is said that uh, give credit to where it is due so we have to acknowledge the source and one way of shortening that is using url shortener so if you are including your module as well some references and it's too long just go to www.shorturl.net and then there is a portion of this box there that you just have to, to paste the the original url and just have to click um short url and automatically in just a nanosecond the computer will generate a short url so it is still useful in our pursuit to crafting comprehensive instructional learning or learning materials and also we can make use of citation generator so for google scholar there is also already an icon there that we have to click and automatically will look into the references and might be for there is also for citation but this is another thing another way that we can cite the um the work that we are using in our respective learning materials so just go to triple double dot citation machine that not slash and for snappy words for if you run out of your english terms and you want to have it like it would not appear redundant so we have to look into some synonyms no we have to consider but we have to be careful in in looking into synonyms like in the right click you just high highlight the word and right click but you have to consider the appropriateness of the word so to to um, in order to um get some help with that we can make use of snappy words as well so just go to www.snappywords.com so this is applicable for both blended learning and modular learning and these five um platforms are the ones i would suggest for those who are using modular learning no? like we cannot access the ones for online man the one that, that i am so earlier so this five no? these five platforms are good enough for us to finally um make a comprehensive instructional material in this new normal looking into the potential um progress our students could have although there is no face-to-face -face interaction so the key takeaway so yes according to the um dr gomez of up that the use of local and indigenous resources also works in remote learning so despite the distance um you are in the most remote area in the country but if you have to make use of local and indigenous resources there is a great chance that your students oh, will learn so use of local and indigenous resources also works in remote learning and another never stop learning the digital learning environment is evolving have you seen the one that was um shared by gma or in some of our some of our networks like even in uh, yeah or shared online the teacher is the from pup or the um he, he was able to get some help from his son from her son i mean uh, as to how to video tape the lesson so the, the the professor is already in his um, late 50s but then still able to learn or to 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 adapt in the challenging situation so that is why we need not to stop learning especially that our students are millennials and soon 
some of our students will be digital natives. If we teachers will not um, update ourselves, upgrade ourselves, we will lag behind and we will be experiencing a lot of challenges along the way. So, again, never stop learning because um, the, the digital learning environment is evolving. The alignment of learning objectives with content, activities, and assessment is most important. So, this is what I have told you earlier, that we have to anchor, uh, we have to anchor the activities in our lessons, although, um, be it printed or online, we really have to anchor this to the Bloom's taxonomy. Like in cognition, what, what we would really want our students to become is to develop the very um, that higher order thinking skills and it will only be possible when you have a clear learning objectives in your mind and that these learning objectives are aligned to what is being set by the institution or by by chat or by that end as to content and we have to allow us we have to allow our creativity expand to look into some assessment strategy that is aligned to this or ad, st assessment strategies that are addressing the um, learning objectives or learning outcomes you set for the lesson and lastly technology helps improve the teaching and learning processes so we have to believe that although like I, I, I understand because a lot of teachers in the department now or uh, across the world are challenged technologically but if we really have that desire to learn if we really have that 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 um, desire to help our students learn better then technology constraints might not be a mystery for us and you know we are so blessed no we are indeed blessed that despite the pandemic we as teachers still have work although the government is um, considering some um, measures for us to um, like to, to for this pandemic to end maybe but we have to be thankful no? uh, we um we still have work a lot of our fellow filipinos have nothing uh, they ha don't have work now like some are laid off then because of the, the private companies are like reducing their manpower but we are so blessed that we are in the department uh, we are in the government service and we still have work and with that our uh, we, with that um, privilege with that opportunity is also our opportunity to pay back to our government to pay back to the people around us what we are fortunate um, through our humble service and our humble service means doing our respective roles the one that i have i have shared earlier in how should we um how should we put in mind our or how how, how should we um internalize um, the thing is how should we internalize our roles towards our teaching profession so again in that we have to adapt the changing landscape of education without murmuring no despite the pandemic has brought to us and the department has given us a lot of you know um, a lot of requirements at the moment but we have always have to give our best in teaching and i know ma'am and sir you have been doing that and what i am trying to tell you now is we just have to continue we just have to continue on our passion and how to make our students become 
um, to, to better learn so that in the future they, we will be uh, making a better individuals. Like the sound foundation for our students starts today and starts here and starts in our respective hearts. So with all the challenges that we are facing, let us not be discouraged. Instead, we have to be positive in all our undertakings because uh, um, according to Philippians 4.14, we can do all things for Christ who strengthens us. And wherever God guides, He provides. Thank you and God bless everyone.